to say good evening to everyone. At this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, call our meeting to order. However, at this particular time, we do not have a quorum, uh, so we will not uh, take any um, action until a quorum is presented. There is supposed to be a quorum here based upon um, them saying that they would be here. So, uh, but we, however, can have whatever discussions we need to have. So, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father God, it's again we come before you, God, we thank you. God, we thank you again for this another blessed opportunity. Oh God, to assemble ourselves in this place one more time. Now God, we pray that we should decrease, that thou shalt increase. Oh God, our prayer is now that you would order our steps, guide our tongues, help us to make righteous decisions, and give us great judgment. Let us set aside anything, oh God, that's not like you. Father, that we may know that it's not about us, but God, that you get all of the glory out of everything that happens or everything that is done in this room. Truly, God, we love you, we honor you, we magnify you, we give you all of the glory. And God, we give you all of the praise. It is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we will uh, table the approval of the agenda. Uh, minutes and we will move to okay well we'll address the agenda as far as the change okay all right at this time we will go ahead and address because there will be an, a change on the agenda and so we'll go ahead and address that part so the item that we need to add to, to the agenda today, um, at the last meeting, the discussion we had about the appointment that the commission has to make, um, and the direction from the previous meeting is that any additional um, vows or interest that came in will be sent to you prior to this, this meeting here. Uh, and an email I forwarded to you the week before last had two names on it, and those names were Mrs. Gompton and her vowel, and Mrs. Fulliker and her vowel as well. Since that email went out, Mrs. Fulliker um, accepted a position on another commission, so that eliminates her name from consideration for the English Commission. In addition, when I sent the email out, I was reminded that a third person had sent in the vow. And, I, and if that's my error. I did not catch that email. And so um, that person did submit her, the third person did submit a vow on February 22nd. Uh, I did not get a chance to get it out in a timely manner. And so uh, the decision was to, I would share that information <coughs> with you at, at, at this meeting here. And so the addition to the agenda will be we will discuss the vacant uh, appointment that the commission has to make as a follow to the previous meeting. So that's the only one item that we can, will be added. Any questions? All right, then we'll move to um, commission discussion. Um, we were asked to bring in our five top human relation issues affecting our communities. And I'll go ahead and start with mine. Um, Okay. All right. Any questions in response to the top five uh, human relations commission issues in our communities? Okay. I think.
think the best way to do that is that Lawanda will be recording those as we as we go around the table and call those out. And as uh, Coach Chairman Green stated, he will start out with his five, and then we'll go around. And, and, and do all five at one time, or one at each of the heads of the ranks? All five at one time. Um, and these are five issues that I consider um, important in our communities. However, um, not necessarily in this order. But uh, first would be uh, the violence and crime. And number two would be uh, homelessness. Three would be unemployment. Four would be education. And the fifth one would be mental health. Again, not necessarily in that order. May recap. Yes. Violence and crime, mm -hmm. homelessness, unemployment, education, mental health. Not in any particular order. Correct. And so you want to just go around and get everybody's, and then we'll come back and have a discussion about this. Okay. From anyone else? Um, I have affordable housing, um, crime. Um, development on the Exxon County side, um, education, and the availability of um, good paying jobs. I'll take the recent revision again now. I have affordable housing, education, what's the other thing? Crime. Crime. Development in Exxon County. Okay. Education and jobs with de decent wages. Okay, so that affordable housing, education, crime, edge from county development, what was that last one? Jobs with decent, decent wages. And I have education, um, okay, affordable housing, jobs with decent wages, crime, development on Edgecombe County, and education. Okay. Okay, I have crime, little drugs, guns, gangs, housing, affordable, um, racism, poverty, and education. Did you say poverty? Poverty. Poverty. I know we're the list five, but we have to be concerned about gentrification as well. Gentrification. What was that, Teresa? I know we're the list five, but we have to be concerned about Anyone else? We're going over the um, five uh, top concerns that we have. Uh, you know, you got you got those five with you. Go over them in your head. You can just say that. Man, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you know. You want to say? Yeah, I got the liquid bill. Okay. I've been hearing a lot about that recently. And then you have crime, and you got the drugs, and then you have black men shooting each other, young men. We have a lot of that lately. Okay. Electric utilities, 
But they said. Every time you say yeah. Or they actually said that too. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Just give a turn to, to, to recap here. So I'm concerned about the fact that there there are a lot of businesses that have help wanted signs in the window, but they ain't really hiring. It's a, it's a either band, either or. Yeah, uh, you, well, gotta, you gotta be qualified, and that qualification could be anything as far as maybe educated, a uh, high school diploma, or either uh, be able to run a machine or. You know, all these, the people that are looking for work, I think they can find work. Well, and there are some sacrifices you got to make. You don't want to work nights. You don't want to go to work at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, people have choices. I mean, and they making them. There's a lot of things going on, but are they able to do those things? We can turn the blue in the job at night with no transportation. And that's the yeah, that's another yeah, that, problem. That's true. That's true. But they can get anywhere they want to go and rock them out. Whenever they want to go, they can be way across town. They need a pack of cigarettes. The store over here ain't so, they're going to go 10 blocks away to go get them. It's the sacrifice and the mentality that you got to use to, to be able to do these things. And if you're going to sit around and let somebody else do it for you, then you're not going to work. So, uh, I'm just saying, you hear this every day about people looking for work, there ain't no job, you know, and the people that go out there knocking on doors to get a job, fight for them. See, they're rocking out looking for people. So when you say, we talk about unemployment, what I hear is that there are a lot of factors to that. I guess just saying, Employment or lack of employment is a blanket 
statement and do the other factors need to be a part of that discussion as well? Yes. Prime example, we had a meeting with the organization earlier today about programs for this nonprofit that's trying to get out into the uh, city. Um, and one of the things they talked about was employment and training and how things have changed from what they were 10, 15, or 20 years ago when you just went and did an application, you saw a vacancy sign. You went into an application and pretty much go the process. A lot of the jobs today require some type of training, certification, and so one void is that a lot, a lot of individuals in our underserved communities and our community at, at, at large, um, there is a gap in connecting those individuals with the services that can provide that. As far as the certification and the training. So there's a lot to follow up, 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 up on the on the employment. Hold on, uh, I know you said you had about the same thing, but do you mind calling you was out? And so I'm kind of, we kind of keep them on for the ones that were really there over two years. Well, there's some there's other things too, just like. This town here is Austin United. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, that's another awesome thing. That's the main major thing we got going on. We need to unite. You know, then we got mental health. Unity. Yeah. Unity. Unity. And mental health. And we got crime. Crime. Crime and mental health. Good job. Good job. Okay. Well, I'd just like to say that I'm glad to see that. Um, they're not all over the place, and we all pretty much see kind of the same thing in our communities and, and what's happening in our city. And so to me, that's a good thing. That means we're all uh, pretty much kind of on the same page and, and uh, want to move in the same direction. And so, you know, that, that was good for me. So with that said, um, you wonder, can you, I'm keeping a tally here, but can you kind of tell us the ones that were mentioned the most? I guess. see, we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to turn that around some? My handwriting is messy. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But it looks like the number one is crime, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like number two is affordable housing. Three, education, four, unemployment or employment, and five, mental health. Do we, are we close or? Pretty much. Did you have something different? No. Okay. And then other concerns include poverty, racism, homelessness. The development of Edgecombe County and unity and um, utilities and gentrification yeah. and just yes, I have it up here and transportation.
Marcy Hutt. Mayor Faye Kessler. Um, these are the concerns that would be taken to the state, the state. Um, is yeah, the, correct. The uh, State Human Rights Commission is scheduled to meet in April. Mm -hmm. And so um, they requested this feedback from all of the local commissions from across the state. And this will kind of be their driving uh, document for things that they will address in the next year going forward. Mm -hmm. And also it's a good exercise for, for us to go through because uh, as you know here, there are some things there. Um, as, as we look at things that we're going to do the next year as well, we can use this list for some priorities. And so I, I was halfway keeping a count of what LaWanda said. Can you repeat what those were in order? Top concern, the number one concern is crime. Okay. Followed by affordable housing, followed by education, employment or unemployment, and mental health. Any questions or concerns in the way those are listed as far as priority? No, I just I think that the violence and the crime and the gun violence uh, definitely has to be number one. There's been movement in all three, and I guess the question is, and uh, major movement in all three, but is it where it shifted? Yeah. And so this conversation here today pretty, pretty much confirms that there's still more to be done. Um, we are still one short of a quorum. However, uh, I will entertain a motion uh, that we move forward with the uh, core consensus that we have. Let me see. Let's check something real quick. We currently have 12. The commission has 13 members. We have vacant one seat. So that gives us 12. And so we need more than half to have a quorum. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Am I, am I counting correctly? No, we, yeah. Um, six, six. Yeah. Half. So we need a majority. Half will not do it. Um, but this right here doesn't really, I think we can work 
if everything is everybody's okay, we can go with the consensus of who is here. Uh, as far as to present this information, because uh, the deadline for this for the state office is 28. So then we need a motion to do that. Well, we can't really do a motion because we don't have a full form. We can do just consensus. Well, let, me, let me ask this question to you. Now, is the, does the ballot say it has to be 50% of the people? Because most quorums don't register 50%. Yes, it's they usually you, a third. You have to have a majority. So the majority is anything above that. Possibly just call a meeting. Call a meeting for just you know that purpose. We could call a meeting, but we got a lot of quorum here. Do you think we would get a quorum if we call a meeting? Maybe it'd be more convenient another day. So that would be have to be next week or the following week. Mm -hmm. So and I think we I'm pretty sure we would be in order uh, to say just by consensus of who was actually here. In this meeting, these are the five. Uh, and we both um, have empty. So can we vote in Senate meeting? That's an option. And the number of votes. What was that? The question was since we don't have a quorum, and I think she wants to proceed to make sure everything is in, in, in order to it, mm -hmm. could we send an email out and ask for a vote via email instead of trying to call another? I think so. I think you can always do a consent without a meeting. Um, I think her suggestion was a good suggestion. Okay. So I put a motion that we uh, vote via email. Anybody disagree with that? No, we can't. Then because we don't have enough to carry a motion, we're, we're just consenting that we'll, we'll do the vote um, with the, uh, based on consensus without a meeting. Is in disagreement, so we're okay. Exactly, yeah. Good. But I do want to understand with the understanding that when this uh, email comes out. Those of us that are here, we still have to respond. That's true. Um, 
this one down to uh, members' concerns or questions. Um, added to the agenda that we would uh, discuss about the um, selection of the vacant seat. And there were two that had turned in originally, we thought, and uh, Ms. Whitaker and Ms. Gunter, and then Ms. Whitaker uh, accepted another position and was unable to be, and it was discovered that Ms. Brown uh, had also turned in a letter of interest as well. And so are there any, any discussion as it relates to the two said now? chance to read on those that were presented and I know we're not going to vote on that today because we don't have a quorum so um, the discussion is we won't have really much to discuss at this moment because we can't vote on it. But, All right, I will share this part. Um, there were some questions as it related to Ms. Gunter um, in relationship to me. And Ms. Gunter is my sister-in-law and no blood relation. And I think it would be very unfair to her uh, to not allow her to be uh, considered um, because I married her sister. We don't live in the same house. We don't even live in the same county. And so um, I would hate for us to pass that judgment. Uh, I could understand it if, you know, she was my sister or, or, or a blood relative, but she's not. And the mere fact that I married her sister should not hold her or keep her out of service. Well, looking at the candidates, I was looking at the versatility. Um, if you look at their overall, I was looking at the, the versatility, not even um, having that as a major factor. But this position needs to have versatility. And looking at Ms. Brown's um, record, she has experience in various um, organizations. She's been grounded um, in the community. So it's a versatility um point for me that was a major factor. All right. Um, and it, you know, I, likewise looking at um, the skill set, looking at the um, Status, trying to get a feel for personalities. Um, I just feel like there's going to be a part of the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority has their hands on the pulse of that community. Uh, being a resident of Edgecombe County which I feel um, needs representation as much as possible. And I do too. Because of the things that are going on over there. Mm -hmm. um, I know that she takes a firm stand in that. And so I'd just like to share that information. Excuse me. I don't want to get lost in this situation here. Uh, are you speaking for her? 
I'm not speaking for. I mean, he's you uh, giving her recommendations. Yeah, I recommended her. Oh, you did. So yes, sir. What's the problem? None that I know of. Uh huh. But there were some some concerns, I guess, because she was my sister-in-law. Who was concerned? I have no idea. Well, I, I, I wanted to make bring clarity to the table from my position and my perspective um, because I did not want um, the reason she was not appointed to be because uh, of her relation to me. Have we chose persecution? No, sir. Okay. Just to make it, that's the only thing that's been on this. Yes. It just at one, one seat, so that and all the other boards are full. All the other seats on this yeah. commission is full. Yeah. And this is the only one that the appointment is made by the commission. Okay, yes, so that's the only one. Only one correct. Okay. So that's just uh, food for thought as we think about it, but preferably in our next meeting we'll have a quorum and be able to make a decision. Uh, but I wanted us to be able to make an informed decision. So we're going to vote before the next meeting. Right. I think what he just said, that uh, we can address that at the next meeting. That's the guide on when we turn over to but then you say it has to be sealed by. No, it doesn't. There's no deadline. There's no deadline. There's no deadline. Okay. We've just been What's doing it, uh, talking about it for for months now, and uh, just wanted to go ahead and get the seat filled. Nothing else, then are there any uh, concerns or questions? I do have a question, uh, Mr. Chair. So as far as um, the email, us responding by email, is that pertaining to the list of items that we have as far as the top five concerns? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how that will work? Is that you will receive an email from either myself or Lawanda. Um, pretty much stating this was a, this came from the consensus of the meeting, however, there's not a quorum, and we're requesting that each member respond to that as they are listed in the terms of a yes or no. And for our benefit, I'm pretty sure that may be something that may come up later. And this is a list that this commission can use. As we're moving forward as well. So, what we're trying to do is get something to send to the state by their deadline so they will assist the State Human Rights Commission in um, fulfilling their project. Any other questions? At this time, uh, does the city have any updates that we need to be made aware of? Or? There are a couple I want to share, um, and just one I'm pretty sure most of you have already heard or read about. Uh, we said the manager started last Monday, Chief Rogers, so uh, we're looking forward to hopefully having him at one of our meetings as well uh, in, in the next couple of months. Related to Back to the Human Relations Commission, and some of you have attended some of the quarterly meetings in the past, and a couple of years ago we were even hosted one of those meetings here in Rocky Mountain. So the next quarterly meeting of the State Human Relations Commission is um, in Winston-Salem on March the 28th. That meeting will consist of representatives from all team relations, 
Department of Information from across the state. In the past, we have always opened that up to any commission members that wanted to attend. I think we, we had the one in Green or some one of the other Teresa attended that one, and we had the one in Raleigh. I will also open up that for this one, but I do realize that once the sale is a good link to drive. So uh, and normally when we leave that unless we normally do it on a day trip. And so uh, that may not be convenient. So I did want to let you all know that that meeting will take place on the twenty eighth of what's what's the sale. What time do you need to start at nine and we'll wrap up. in the office as also we kind of mentioned at last month's meeting we have fair housing month coming up that's in april we've got a couple of projects that we're working on uh, the most notable one that i want to you all to mark this out for is the fair housing workshop that we have on april 20th there's one uh, in the morning session at 10 o'clock and there's a second session evening at 6 at the Booker T Theater on East Temple. And we would like to have uh, Is that 8? 10. What time is it here? Time is morning 10 to 12 again around 12.30 and the second, the evening one is starts at 6 6 to 7 or 7 They are both at the Booker T Theater. And be on the lookout in the next probably week, you will receive a flyer about all of the activities that are happening during the month of April. Uh, Human Relations is, is, is working in conjunction with Community Development and there are a number of things dealing with neighborhoods and houses. I will share with you that on April the 3rd, which is the first Monday in April at the city council meeting, uh, there's always a proclamation to acknowledge that the city honors and participates in the housing month. That will be done at the April 3rd city council meeting. And um, that will be presented by the mayor. Uh, me and my staff will be there as well to accept that proclamation. And if anyone from the commission would like to join us, you are welcome to as well. Because remember, anything that the human relation office does is pretty much the commission as well. Eight and a third, what time? Seven o'clock. Mm I know I got other two, three other staff members. Have I omitted something that you need to share? Also, just to add with the um, April Fair Housing, if you can go ahead and put on your calendars and we'll remind you, and plus when we set the schedule on the 28th of April and the 29th, we're doing tours where Mr. Jones talked about um, the collaboration between community development and human relations, um, the residential facade program and also the different um, housing things that they have in community development, they're gonna do some bus tours so that citizens can see, you know, the jobs that the city is doing on the houses and out in our community. So please sign up for those. You know, a lot of people are working on Friday, so that's why we made it convenient for those who are working on Friday to do Saturday, so sign up for that.
any other comments? And if not, we stand to adjourn. We got public comments, right? Okay, I, I, I would like a guest right. board. I'm um, Camilla Dancy, a previous board member. For y'all that don't know, but I was listening to the meeting. This 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 body is a very important body. Um, you can tell that by the conversation today. But I have some concerns. One being, what happens if you don't get enough votes? What is in and, and what is in the bylaws? when it comes to who can be um, voted on. Because if that's not in the bylaws, that's a, that ain't worth the discussion. So look at your bylaws. Um, okay, the other thing is, what you gonna do about folk missing three consecutive meetings because they're supposed to be automated off the commission. And the other thing is, can I get a list of the roll of the members, um, just the roll of the members from January up until today? Um, something else. But um, this board is a very important board, and, and I have much respect for it. Cover all areas, and, and the stuff y'all talked about today, I think it's very serious to all citizens of Edgecombe and Nash County. So, you know, I... I, I, I um, Really appreciate y'all taking time out of your busy schedule coming, but you need to be able to to work. You know, I I, I know my schedule is busy, and um, I'm quite sure y'all. So it's disrespectful to me to have a meeting like this with important information, and you can't vote. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say the Rocky Mountain Police Department, they are still looking for information. It is really, we have a lot of shootings in the city, but the most recent was a 15-year-old. Okay. So they were out in the streets passing out flyers last night, asking anyone to come forth um, with information. Um, there's more aware of what's going to happen on, on Monday. Yeah, the um, crime in our area is extremely serious. There's just so much going on, uh, especially with our young folk, uh, that we definitely have to do something to address these issues and and, uh, and, and the safety you know, uh, of our communities and the safety of our, our people. So, most definitely. Um, Mr. Dancer asked for some information. Are we going to be able to come? Thank you. Anything else? If not, we will stand to adjourn.